The Extraordinary World of Beatles. Beetles are one of the most species-rich and abundant orders of insects. They take on various shapes and forms. They inhabit all environments. Beetles can be encountered both in soil and in tree crowns. They are diurnally or nocturnally active, usually remaining hidden, which is why in nature we can see only a small fraction of the species present. On warm summer days, many insects bustle among flowers, feeding on their petals and pollen. This is also a good opportunity to meet specimens of the opposite sex and to copulate. The meal time for females, however, remains uninterrupted during copulation. Many species of beetles appeared on a fragrant flowery meadow. They have flown out of the nearby forest. These are the so-called Anthophila species, which feed on pollen. However, there are also beetles that don't visit flowers because they first appeared on Earth at the time when there were no flowering plants and when dinosaurs reigned over our planet. These species are mainly associated with coniferous trees and they normally lead an active nightlife. They are tens of millions of years old and they actually still live in our forests. This species inhabited Earth 50 million years ago. This specimen was captured in resin that transformed into amber over time. It is the ancestor of the pine bark longhorn beetle named Notarina punctata, living in Europe today. Both species are similar to each other and differ only in small details like, for example, the tiny hairs on their wing covers. We may safely say that the currently living pine bark longhorn beetle is a living fossil, which exists today in an unchanged form. The beetle prefers resinous trees, especially lone standing old pines with thick bark.
Among the beetles of our forests, we will find more relict species. One of them is a beetle sometimes called the Sawyer that comes from an ancient evolutionary branch. The larvae of these evolutionarily oldest longhorn beetles develop in soil, feeding on the remains of dead plants, mainly dying tree trunks. In the same habitat, we can also meet larvae of the majority of species from the scarab beetle family. They move in the ground, sometimes changing the host on which they live. Each type of organic matter is developed by beetles. We will find them even in fungi, including polypores or wood fungi. Larvae of this beetle, round fungus beetles, inhabit and feed on truffle mushrooms. An abundance of animals live in forests, processing an enormous amount of organic matter and producing excrement. This, in turn, has its consumers in the form of coprophagus beetles. Moreover, in their habitat, there are many predators that hunt for them. Most frequently, the beetles build holes in the ground where they lay eggs. The excrement of mammals will serve as food for their future larvae. They have little time since fresh excrement dries up quite fast, and that is why the beetles are in a hurry with their business. They are fast for yet one more reason. They themselves can fall prey to fierce predators, also inhabiting this environment, for instance, rove beetles. The minotaur beetle lives on excrement of rabbits, hares and roe deer. In the forest, nothing goes to waste. Insects, including beetles, have specialized in decomposing processes of dead organic matter. In this way, they are part of the natural sanitary services of the forest. This burying beetle has many stowaways on his body. These are the pollen mites which use the beetle as a free means of transport. 
The burying beetle, then, plays a double role in the environment. Not only does he clean up dead animals, but he also makes it easier for other organisms to get to fresh carcasses. Among the beetles, there is a group of predators hunting on other animals, like ground beetles, whose daily diet are earthworms, caterpillars or snails. Among the larvae of beetles, we also see those that hunt for other insects, while sitting under protruding barks of trees. Storms haunting forests can cause severe damage in forest stands. However, there are organisms that have learned to benefit from the damage resulting from such cataclysms. Foresters have to hurry to remove the aftermath of raging winds, otherwise the surviving forest stands are threatened by the invasion of insects developing in the damaged wood. Such situations are suitable for these large pine weevils the scent of fresh resin attracts them like a magnet. Global warming results in lowering of groundwater levels, which adversely affects the condition of forests. Weakened trees are less resistant to the invasion of assailants, which take advantage of such occasions. An example of this is the gradation that harass spruce forests. The European spruce bark beetle, this inconspicuous insect, can reproduce very quickly in quantities capable of killing thousands of trees. However, it also has its enemies, for example the ant beetle. Beetles, like other organisms in the forest, have many natural enemies for which they themselves constitute part of a daily diet. Thank you.
These are the parasitoid wasps. They're looking for larvae that live under the bark in order to lay eggs in them. However, there are also beetles that resemble dangerous insects, what makes them less vulnerable to predators. This phenomenon is called mimicry. This wasp-mimicking beetle is deceptively similar to dangerous wasps. The first pair of wings, the elytra, has been reduced, exposing the other pair of wings. Additionally, long hind legs and contrasting coloration give the insect a dangerous appearance and allow it to avoid the threat from potential predators. Some beetles, like these wasp beetles, have bright yellow coloration and run briskly on the barks of tree trunks in the same way wasps do. Another wasp longicorn beetle has a pattern on the elytra that makes it look quite aggressive. Moving quickly, it gives the impression of being a dangerous insect. The checkered beetle, the rufous-shouldered longhorn beetle and the wasp beetle all have bright warning colors that send a clear message. Attention, I am dangerous. I may even be poisonous. There are various techniques of survival in a dangerous world where every organism can become a prey of another. Instead of frightening an opponent by pretending to be a dangerous species, it is often better to remain unnoticed. Some species, then, have coloration which allows them to perfectly merge with the background, making them very difficult to see. When disturbed, some beetles fall into leaf litter, while others, such as the brown spruce longhorn beetle, can pretend to be dead. This phenomenon is called thanatosis. However, camouflage and escape are not always sufficient to deceive an assailant. Oh! Oh look, here is the lined dune beetle. Some species of beetles have developed a method of deterring a predator by making loud sounds. Like this lined dune beetle that makes noise by rubbing his abdomen against the elytra. The sound is quite loud and it can easily scare you. The lined dune beetle is a Termophila species and we can meet it on the warm desert places in the pine forest. Poplar borers, like most longhorn beetles, have developed a slightly different sound technique. They rub their prothorax with a stridulatory plate. The oil beetle is not a fast beetle.
Moreover, it is a non-flying beetle, but in dangerous situations, it releases a toxic oily liquid that escapes from the pores of its knees. This liquid is cantharidin, an extremely strong poison. The cantharidin is perfectly absorbed through the human skin and can cause burns as well as blistering. One of the techniques of effective defense is simply a quick takeoff. Some beetles are able to take off in a fraction of a second, so that we cannot see the moment when they open their elytra. There are also beetles, such as the green rose chafer, which do not open them at all. The flying wings emerge from the lateral side of the elytra, which remain closed. Beetles have two pairs of wings. The first one is transformed into hard covers, and the second is used for flying. The wings of the second pair are folded in order to fit under the covers. To take off, the beetle must straighten them. However, the membranous wings do not have muscles, hence lymph is pumped through the veins, which causes them to straighten and stiffen. There are few species of apterous beetles, for example the oil beetle. Their flying wings are reduced and only the hard elytra are visible and shortened as well. The beetle's ability to fly, as in the case of most insects, is the most common way of moving but not only for the purpose of escaping. This is the best method of moving over long distances in order to find specimens of the opposite sex. Males are on the lookout for females. During the mating flight, they tend to be clearly agitated. This male flew onto a couple in copulation. This time he failed to win the already occupied female. Males of the stag beetle fight real battles for females and their main aim is to throw the opponent off the branch. Sometimes it happens that a male which has already found his favorite female considers any insect approaching her arrival. This careless female had the chance to find it to her cost. Males grapple with their powerful mandibles that resemble the antlers of the deer. The smaller stag beetle quickly withdraws from the uneven fight.
Copulation in beetles begins with a male climbing on the back of a female and with his abdomen. And here, let's take a closer look at how it works. The male copulatory organ has a complex structure. The most important organs that allow copulation are a hard ideagus and soft endophallus. The ideagus acts like a shoehorn. It facilitates the opening of the female pygidium. After penetration into the abdomen, the endophallus is quickly inflated and then becomes stuck inside the female as it enlarges, preventing it from sliding out and interrupting the copulation. The endophallus often has a complicated shape, a feature unique for a given species and used in science to distinguish similar ones. The endophallus is also flexible and thanks to this feature it has another important role. After inflating and sliding out of the female abdomen, it acts as a mobile connection between a male and a female, allowing them to move during their copulation, which can last for several minutes. A male of common tiger beetles sits on a female by grabbing her with his large mandibles, which he usually uses for hunting other insects, mainly flies. Immediately after copulation, a female prepares herself to lay eggs in a host plant which will provide food for her larvae. Laying eggs takes place individually or in batches. This process is sometimes interrupted in order to carry out further copulations, thanks to which there is a better mixing of genes in the population. While some eggs are being laid, a female produces the next ones so that she can lay even more of them. Depending on the species, a female may lay from a dozen to several hundred eggs. This female of the flower longhorn lays eggs on the bark of an old European beech. The female ovipositor has two movable detectors at its end that look for cracks the ovipositor presses itself deeply into the hollows in which an insect lays eggs. Then she floods the eggs with liquid so that it will be impossible for other predators living in this environment to find them. Without this procedure, the eggs could be easily eaten. Larvae of beetles can be found in all environments. A huge cavity of an oak is filled with a mix of decaying wood, excrement and sawdust. It is an ideal environment for the occurrence of several rare species of the scarabs. 
rzadkich gatunków z rodziny żukowatych. Larvae feed in the cracks of the cavity, producing a substrate that over time reaches a volume of a few to a dozen or so liters. This contributes to a better circulation of matter. Some larvae develop under the bark of trees, sometimes penetrating the surface layers of sapwood and sometimes going deep into the wood. After reaching its mature stage, the larva prepares the pupal cell and metamorphoses into a pupa, from which, after a few or several days, an imago hatches. In pupae, we can already recognize the shape of a future beetle. Its legs, wings, antennae, and segments of abdomen are clearly formed. Pupae of the pine jewel beetle can be found in pine stumps, on which also swarming of this species takes place. This beetle is one of the largest European representatives of the jewel beetle family. Dead pine wood is also the habitat of many other species of beetles. The ponderous borer or flower longhorn, which are characterized by sexual dimorphism. Males of flower longhorn have yellow elytra and serrate antennae, whereas females are red and thicker. At first glance, they look like two different species. The pine weevil is connected with this sort of habitat. The European house borer needs dead and dry coniferous wood for his development. In the understory of the coniferous forest, we can find the flower beetle feeding on monotropes. Under the bark of pine stumps, larvae of the lesser pine borer develop. A male of this species has exceptional antennae five times longer than his body. Another species of this genus is mainly associated with spruces, but it can also be found on pines. The brown tan bark beetle is a rare species living on spruces. On spruce as well as on pine, his close relative also develops, the violet tan bark beetle. The largest Polish soils, originating from Siberian forests, is connected with spruce in the north of Europe. In Poland, it is mainly distributed in the Białowieża forest.
The twin soya sator is encountered on spruce in the whole range of Polish mountains, together with a slightly smaller soya beetle. Many other species of beetles live on spruces, Molochus with shortened elytra or Obrium. In the mountain forests, together with spruce, there is beech, creating forests called Carpathian beech forest. Fertile Carpathian beechwood is inhabited by many valuable and exceptional insects, such as the Rosalia longicorn. To ensure the preservation of this species, dead trees are left in the natural habitat so that the Rosalia longicorn can develop in them safely. At the same time, wood in warehouses is covered with a net to prevent beetles from laying eggs in the raw material destined to be processed. There are several other species of beetles living in the beech forest. Two examples of spotted flowers, longicorns, known in Poland only in the Bieszczady mountains. A completely different habitat, also abundant in many species of beetles, are thermophilus oak forests. very rare species in Poland is the variable chafer. Beetles inhabit virtually every possible part of old oaks. Roots, trunks, cavities, branches, limbs, both alive and dead. There are many species of beetles associated with oaks. The most famous is the stag beetle. A hundred-year-old oak with a south-facing exposure on the bank of the river valley is an ideal place for the great Capricorn beetle. Its larvae develop under the bark of these old oaks and during the day the beetles stay in the bark crevices. So, unfortunately, we have to wait until the evening to meet him. The number of lone standing oaks constantly decreases and together with them, the number of species of beetles associated with such trees, including the great Capricorn beetle.
dead limbs in the ground level zone are inhabited by this rare flower longhorn, which also visits flowers willingly. Under the bark of branches, larvae of the violet tanbark beetle, Ropolopus, red oak longhorn beetle, oak borer, and many other species develop. In the understory of the Thermophilus oak forest, the martagon lily sometimes grows, to which the lily leaf beetle takes a liking. Her larvae feed on lily leaves and on the leaves of her cousin, Lily of the Valley. Elder dominated forests are the remnant of a climate similar to a Siberian one, which occurred in Poland in the interglacial and postglacial period. Along with this habitat, many species of beetles came to Poland, which are considered today as relic species. The particularly rare Xylotrechus ibex is found in Europe practically only in Poland. Its host plant, Alda, was determined only a few years ago. It inhabits the oldest trees and its larvae feed in thick bark. A closely related species is the yellowed green longicorn, which lives in deciduous trees, including alder. The alder jewel beetle from the jewel beetle family develops only in wood of old alder. Its elytra are shimmering in various colors in shades of brown, copper, red and green. These colors are triggered by refraction and splitting of light in the structure of the elytra. It is an extremely thermophilic species. On hot days, the beetles sit on warmed up alder trunks where they are hardly visible because their color perfectly blends with the color of the alder bark. Jewel beetles are very quick escape artists. When worried, they fall pretending to be dead or they just take off quickly, which makes them difficult to spot in the area. The giant flower beetle doesn't visit flowers like other members of the flower beetle family. It is characterized by sexual dimorphism. A male is red and a female is black with a red pronotum. This relict species lives in damp habitats and inhabits dead trunks of deciduous trees, either standing or fallen, mainly aspen and birch. Its development requires heavily decomposed wood, which is why it is found only in habitats with a large amount of such material. In Poland, this species is under law protection. Yes. There it is. This is a beetle, which in Europe occurs only in Poland, only in the Białowieża forest, and only here, on the 100-meter section of road. We were lucky that we've met him today, despite the rain that fell just a moment ago. This green flower beetle is a Siberian species, inhabiting the eastern part of the Palearctic, from the Urals to Japan. Detached from its close range, this locality in Poland is the westernmost place where we can meet this species. It came to Europe relatively recently, several thousand years ago, together with spruce forests. It is preserved in one locality in Poland, which was only possible because this environment has remained intact for many thousands of years. Forests are a natural place of life for many unique organisms. 
Sustainable forest management, apart from logging, also aims to preserve forest habitats with their biodiversity. As a result, beetle species that are rare or extinct in other countries still live on in the Polish forests. Translation, Agnieszka and Jacek Kurzawa. Consulting, Tomasz Ciszewski and John Sweeney. Read by John Beecham. <laughs>